guys, Steve here. I just wanted to give you a quick little message on a tip for curing marine ick or marine velvet in your tank. Um, long story short, I'll try and make this video quick. Okay, so I have a 75 gallon reef tank, which I will show you, that I absolutely love. I put a lot of time into it and a lot of money. I thought it wouldn't cost me as much as it did, but it did. And more. But you love it so you take care of it and you do the best you can. Um, long story short, I used to have a 28 gallon nano cube and I moved on to a 75 gallon using a Berlin filtration system. The Berlin filtration system, for those who don't know, is using your live rock as your biological filter. Along with that, I have a sump underneath the tank, which I'll show you, a sock that the water filters down into right from the tank. It's a reef ready tank. Goes through the sump into my eShops 120 skimmer which helps to take out all the extra crap from the water. Then it goes through a sponge back into the tank. The water's crystal clear and my parameters are awesome. I've had three different reef shops test my water in the last two weeks, about five times total. The water's great. There's no ammonia. Everything's fine. The tank has been cycled. Here's where the problem comes in. My fish are dying after three days. I had a little blue tang that died, and the only thing I noticed, there were some ridges on its body, little pimples, bumps, if you will, and then that progressed to little salt flakes, like someone took some salt and sprinkled it on his body. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was some disease. I did some reading. Uh, I found out that it could be ick. or, God forbid, marine velvet. Marine velvet is the same type of parasite, but their body also has a thin coating of white, faint white on its body, like a film of white, all right? So here's basically what's going on now. Um, I did everything I could, and I did all the reading. There's nothing else wrong with this tank. Everything is fine. The water changes are once every three weeks, a 15% water change. Water is perfect. Fish, fish are healthy. Everything's fine. I had a blue tang, two clowns I've had for a year, um, a six line wrasse, and a watchman goby, and a lawnmower blenny. That is all I had. So I went to the store and they told me to get garlic guard. Garlic guard. And when you do it, this it's a liquid and it has to keep refrigerated. You put it in the fridge, you take some of their salt water, that's I keep mine at 78 degrees. You put a cap full of the garlic guard in there with their frozen mysis shrimp, which I keep in here, in the freezer, and you feed them, and that'll cure your ick problem. It just helps the fish to deal with the ick problem. A lot of people have said online that if you do the garlic, it'll help them eat, it'll help their immunity, and they'll be fine. That's not true. Once you have ick in the tank, you will always have ick in the tank. Ick is a parasite. It's similar to me telling you, there's a massive flu virus in this house. Soak your food in vitamin C and eat it to build up your immunity, along with echinacea and vitamin E, and you'll be fine. You're not going to be fine, because as soon as your resistance goes down, you're going to be struck by the flu. You need to get rid of that flu. You need to get rid of that parasite. Um, people say, oh yeah, I fed them garlic and now my tank is fine. No more outbreaks. My other fish look great. They will get it, because what this parasite does is it finds fish as a host. It embeds itself in their bodies, feeds on them for five to seven days, and then drops off into the sand bed below. Encrusts itself in a bubble that is harder to kill than cockroaches I've read. That bubble stays in there while it multiplies anywhere between 5 to 28 days. This is based on temperature. The colder your water is, the longer it's going to take. You can speed up that process, which people have said, raise your temperature to 82 degrees. All that's doing is speeding up the process, the life cycle of this parasite. So they feed on your fish, fall down, and crust, multiply, find a fish, feed on it, fall down, and crust, and multiply, and it keeps going and going. This is not a problem in the ocean because 
the ocean is so big and the big tidal currents are carrying all these parasites around, it really doesn't have a chance to find these fish. Uh, but inside your aquarium, it's a parasite's paradise because it finds fish very easily. It does not un infect um, inverts like your shrimps and um, s your snails won't be affected or your, your corals. Um, so what you're going to want to do, and also what they suggested was feeding this. This is really good. Dr. G's anti-parasitic caviar. You have to keep this refrigerated too. It treats ick, brooklynella, which is um, clownfish disease, uh, many more parasites. Basically it's a gel and you just put half a cap in your, your fish water and it's a food. It helps the fish heal from the inside. But again, once the damage is done, that parasite is in your tank. So how do you get rid of this parasite? You do a lot of reading. Basically there's three methods. There's the copper method, introducing copper in your tank. Once you do that, your tank will be completely annihilated, nuked biologically. Your live rock will be destroyed. Your water parameters will be all out of whack. You will kill your corals. So that's not good unless you have a hospital tank, which is what I did. It's a pain in the ass, but I did it. Um, and you have to keep all fish out of your water for six to eight weeks. I'm going to go eight weeks. I just started yesterday. So there's that method, copper with nothing in your tank. Second method is raising the temperature by 82 degrees. As I said, this does nothing at all but speed up the cycle process of this parasite. Um, the third thing to do would be lowering your salinity to 1.009. My water is 1.024, which all of yours should be as well. That's what they say. Um, by lowering it, it kills the parasite because it literally bursts those egg bubbles that they're in and it just destroys them. The salinity, they can't live in it. The fish will be fine, the corals will not. So again, you're looking at another tank. I am going the copper method and I'm going to show you right now the situation. Alright guys, so here's the 75 gallon tank, fishless. I did it yesterday, it took me a few hours. I had to remove all the rock. It was a pain in the ass because the yellow tank just would not get captured. I didn't chase them because I didn't want to freak them out and cause any stress. Like they say, if you add a rock or if you add a coral or you put your hand in the tank, it, st it stresses out fish. So I want to just use this opportunity to re-landscape the tank. Um, since the fish aren't in it, there's nothing to stress. I do have a crab, um, a bunch of uh, hermit crabs, and uh, four snails and three shrimps, uh, fire shrimp, peppermint shrimp, and cleaner shrimp. So right now, let me show you the tank that's fishless. So this is Luke. He's my fish helper, right? Mm -hmm. You go with me to the stores and mm -hmm. help me spend money? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, good. So Luke, can you open the cabinet down there? Thank you. Yep, open that up all the way and the other one too. Very good. All right, so down here we have, I've come a long way since the 28 nano cube. It's really easy to do once you guys do your research. So I have a reef ready tank, which means the tank is already drilled. Down here, you can see everything's coming down here to the hose. We've got the return, uh, the return coming from the tank. Down in here, caught by the sock, which is kind of nasty. That's after one day. Uh, you want to clean these guys in the washing machine with bleach. My wife loves that. I want to be in the video. You want to be in the video? Mm -hmm. All right, there you are again. All right, good. Let's continue. So we have the eShops 120. It's rated for 120 gallon, and it's a 75. So we want to get things that are rated higher. So I have a 75 gallon. Here is the eShops 120 uh, skimmer. Um, it's bubbling very well, causing oxygen to go into the tank. Which is always great to have more oxygen in the water for your fish. And the bubbles break. All the crap falls off to the side, and that's all the nasty stuff you can't see with the naked eye collecting. It took about three weeks for this thing to break in. Um, it bubbled over the top for three weeks like it was broken, and then it just stopped overnight and it starts collecting crap. Then once that is collected, water comes out from the skimmer, flows up through here into the sponge, and is returned. The pump pumps it back up into the tank. A lot of you reefers already know about this, but for the beginners out there like I was three months ago to a big, two months ago to a big tank, or three months, whatever it was, 
that's the deal. So we have a bunch of live rock. This was, half of this was taken from my 28 gallon tank. The other half is the white rock is the dead rock I added about a month ago. So I guess by now it, I don't know, it may be cycled through. So I have some really kick-ass corals that I absolutely love. There's my first one, a frog spawn. All right. Um, frog spawn family as well. There's a star polyp. I call them grass corals. I love those guys. I just love them. I'm, I'm not into the zoanthid thing. Um, I was and I got rid of it. I just don't like it. Mainly because the whole toxic thing. I don't want those things stressed out and nail my water and possibly kill fish. Um, so that's all I have in here. There are no fish. All right, that's the deal. So the, I just started this yesterday. Are you forgetting something? What am I forgetting? A green crab. Oh yeah, we have a green crab too. I'm not sure. Where is he? He's in there somewhere. He was in there. Where is he? Alright, so there's the 75 gallon. Can you close the doors, Luke? Thank you. Alright, so let's go downstairs and check out the tank that we set up yesterday. Okay, so as a, just a little quick side note here. Um, this is a recording studio that I have. I'd like to share a little extra personal things with you guys. Not just all fish stuff. Alright. So uh, this place has been collecting a little bit of dust lately because I have been spending time. And I want to be in the video. Yeah, you're going to be. This place has been collecting a little bit of dust because I've been spending a lot of my time healing fish. Alright guys, so here we are in the basement. Um, I didn't know where to put this nano tank. I had it for sale, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to keep it as a hospital tank or quarantine tank. Here's the guys I caught yesterday. Um, I did put two clowns in there that I purchased yesterday. All right, they're doing great. I'm gonna be in the video. You will. Here, step aside for a second. All right. Sorry about the dirty glass and everything. And so there is the yellow tang doing really well. Never saw any spots on his body. Two clowns. The little goby right there. He's uh, just chilling out, doing his thing. And then the six line ras, oop, she just shot up to the top. I've got the water kept to 80 degrees. I've got a uh, digital thermostat back there set for 85. I, you have to tweak it, you know, it's set for 85, but this thermostat here, you have to get a real thermostat. It registers at 79 for the last 24 hours, 79. So this is what I um, highly recommend. Cupramine, all right? Buffered Action Copper. It's highly concentrated copper. It treats the water. Read the instructions on here. These guys have been in here a day, and this is what I'm feeding them. The Life Spectrum Pellet Food. Highly recommended by many reefs and reefers out there. I feed those guys twice a day with that to keep their immunity up, keep them strong. These little guys are going to be down here. I feel bad for them because there's no sand, there's no rock, there's nothing porous for the parasite to get into. Um, if I did put live rock in here, I could not use it in my reef tank upstairs because copper will stay in the rock. It'll filter through my system and it will kill my corals. Um, also very bad for inverts. So eight weeks, starting yesterday, these guys have got to stay in here in a treated tank, healthy. Now, here's why. In that reef tank upstairs, what's going to happen when those parasites launch off the sand out of that encrusted shell. They're going to look for fish to host and eat. Oh my god, there's no fish anywhere. What are we going to do? We're going to die. Those parasites are going to die. And then these guys are going to be healthy. And then I'm going to do a freshwater dip on them, acclimate them slowly in that water. I will not use any of this equipment in that reef tank. Not the thermometer, not the heaters, nothing. I'm going to keep this going for 24 hours. I want to be in the video. Right, there you go. So this taught me a lesson. Even when I buy a fish from the best reef store ever, I'm still going to quarantine my fish for three to four weeks in a mild copper treatment. Then I'm going to let them do a soft water swim, a fresh water swim, sorry. And I'm going to acclimate them in my tank. I want to have a 100% parasite-free tank. 
how is it looking at an empty reef tank in my living room? It's not bad. I still have really cool corals and shrimp to watch. And I'd rather have my health, my fish be healthy and everything be cool. Will they get stressed? Yes. If they get stressed and I noticed bumps on these fish again or any fish I bring into the tank, they're going into the hospital tank and I'll do it again. Yes, it's a pain in the ass. I've thought about doing this for a good few days and I finally decided, screw it, I'm going to do it. Um, those of you are probably maybe wondering, how did you get a tank up and running so fast if it hasn't had time to cycle biologically? Well, what I did was I took this, I, I filled this with brand new salt water, and then I took the sponge that was in my reef tank upstairs, and I floated it in here and I squished it out and I got rid of all the junk particles and algae and food that wasn't eaten and it instantly cycled this tank. So now you're saying, but wait a minute, now the parasites are in this tank. That's correct. But it doesn't matter because they're going to be killed by the copper, and they've got no sand to land in, and no rock to embed in, so they're going to die. Um, what I also did was, it may not be a long enough time, but this sponge right here, see there's already some garbage on it that was caught by the other tank sponge. Um, I put that in my other tank about a week ago, brand new so that already has some bacteria and stuff from the other tank to help cycle this through so it's been 24 hours and uh, there you go you know um, I'm gonna just watch these guys and nurse them feed them twice a day with the garlic and uh, there you go I hope you enjoyed this video sorry for babbling good luck to you Hopefully you don't have to do this, but let me just leave you with this. Once you have ick or that parasite in your tank, nothing will get rid of that parasite. And if your fish all recover, the parasite will live on, and it may come back even a year later. I've read people had breakouts even a year later. So that's the deal. Just feeding your fish good enough is not going to cure the ick. And I'm looking at my yellow tang. He's a little blurry, but I'm I'm seeing absolutely no dots on him. Nothing. I don't know why he survived it. And everyone else died. Him and my six-line wrasse up there survived it. I don't know how, but I hope this was informative. There's a lot more experienced reefers out there than me, but I've learned an awful lot by reading my ass off over the last month since this nasty breakout. I mean, every time I told someone at a store, oh, your fish are not living more than three days, they say, ick doesn't react that quick. Well, guess what? Something's killing off my fish. And the marine velvet and the ick do kill off fish within three days, especially marine velvet, which is the same thing as ick, but way worse. And my blue tang had a thin film layer of white on its body, so I'm thinking it's marine velvet. It's nasty. And I'm willing to go through this to save my tank and my fish. I want to have nice fish to look at with less worry. Now, after eight weeks' time, maybe nine weeks just for extra good measure, if it turns out that I acclimate these guys right and they're dying off again, I'll give up. The, I'll give up. And I'll be placing an ad for my tank for sale for any of you interested. Have a great weekend. Good luck. Feel free to comment below um, and have fun.